What's up, y'all? Hey, it's Toba D, pound for pound, ATL. Man, first of all, I just want to thank everybody, JR and myself. I know he echoes this. 2,400 subs and our 18th video went over 1,000 plus views. And man, we could not have done this without you guys, man. And uh, JR and myself are definitely in talks about Hey, man, some type of giveaway, man. We can hit this 3,000 strong. Hopefully, before the season starts, man, we're definitely in talks about that. Somebody's going to get something special from us, man, once we hit this 3,000 mark, man, because you guys have been wonderful. Hey, man, keep subscribing to the channel. Uh, keep liking it. Keep commenting and sharing it as you have done. We thank you for all of those things you've done for us. And we ask that you just continue to do it, man. And let's grow this thing and grow this community. We know there are a lot of other great Atlanta Falcons content creators out there. And we thank you guys for still taking time out of your day to still come over and stop by Pound for Pound ATL's channel. With that being said, man. Hey, I'm looking at this roster, and I know last year I was excited about the roster too as well. Um, but I'm really super excited. I guess I'm repeating it again. Um, super excited about this roster. The Falcons look like they have done a great job with how they have set things up uh, in 2020, and I'm really ecstatic about it. And two groupings I want to talk about that really stood out to me right away on the offensive side of the ball. Hey, it is the wide receiving group and the tight end group that the Atlanta Falcons have. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm thinking Matt Ryan might be able to hit 13 different receivers again uh, in 2020 like he did in 2016. And, hey, man, I know a lot of you guys are clamoring for a run game and all of those things, but – I'm right now not that confident in Dirk Cutter because of history has shown he don't run the ball well, guys. But what he does love to do is throw the football. And the Falcons have definitely gotten him some weapons to be able to do that this year. Him and Matt Ryan in 2020. And we're going to go over some of those weapons, man. Some of these guys that are returning back uh, in their second and third year for the Atlanta Falcons and Matt Ryan. Uh, we're going to start this show off, man, with Olamide Zacchaeus, number 17. And what I'm going to do, y'all, man, we're going to show some clips up here, man, so you guys can enjoy that while I'm talking about some of these wide receivers uh, and some of these tight ends. Uh, excuse the noise that just went. That was my computer. Uh, some of these tight ends, man, that we have, and you know as well as I know, the Falcons have kind of been busy taking and picking some XFL players and bringing them over to the Atlanta Falcons to join them. And hopefully we will have a camp to start on time in July. But Olamide Zacchaeus is an interesting guy that came to the Atlanta Falcons undrafted, didn't get signed. Um, a guy who was a former teammate mate of Kurt Van Kurt. Uh, many of you know that for the Virginia Cavaliers. Those guys had a serious connection. A guy that I felt like would help Kurt Van Kurt be able to possibly win um, the second spot at QB and beat Matt Schaub out, which doesn't look like it's happening right now because I believe they did pick up Matt Schaub's option. And it looks like they're going to at least keep Matt Schaub for one more year unless Kurt Van Kurt coming off this injury really just shows out where he gives them no choice but to sacrifice letting Matt Schaub go. But Olamide, man, he had some nice plays, man, in the preseason. I'm sure many of you remember him against the Miami Dolphins in that preseason game. Man, had a nice deep sideline catch. Taps both feet in before falling flat um, from Matt Schaub. Beautiful catch. I'm um, showing that clip up where you can see it and enjoy that, man. And, I mean, he got a chance to get his feet wet in the NFL in some regular season games. Now, he did play a lot of snaps. But he took advantage of the opportunities that he got, whether it was special teams, where you know he made the play, um, recovered the fumble on the San Francisco 49ers game, getting the last touchdown for the Atlanta Falcons for the special teams unit. Also, a big-time catch from Matt Ryan against the Carolina Panthers here uh, in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. 
uh, 93 yards total. Matt Ryan hit him in stride, and he took it the rest of the way, breaking one tackle, and it was all she wrote from there, man. This guy has some speed. I'm excited to see what he's going to do in his second year now, being under the scheme that Dirk Cutter wants to run uh, and having another year under his belt, coming in, um, really competing for a fourth, fifth, or sixth spot for the Atlanta Falcons wide receiver rotation. I think the Falcons is going to be forced to have to take at least have six wide receivers on their roster going into the season. And I think Olamide Zaccheaus will get one of those spots. Now, the next guy I want to talk about was another undrafted free agent. And Julio Jones had nothing but great things to say about this guy. Um, Christian Blake, number 13, if I'm not mistaken, his number. Now, he didn't have a lot of explosive plays that I would have liked to have seen him do. But one thing I did enjoy, and I'm sure many of you will enjoy this as well, I'm going to be showing some clips of Christian Blake catching one on, yes, Marcus Lattimore, who ended up ultimately getting a penalty after that catch uh, from Christian Blake in front of him. And Christian Blake getting him a catch on P.J. Williams, another guy that was on the New Orleans Saints. And look, I'm, if you guys will notice I'm going to be showing a lot of clips from the Buccaneers, uh, plays we've made on Carolina Panthers, and plays we've made on the New Orleans Saints. Look, ESPN and, and NFL Network won't do it, so, hey, let's us do it since they won't do it for us. They always like to show us getting beat up by other teams but never like to show us doing the beating up. So we're going to do that this time. But Christian Blake, I think, can – earn himself a weight on this roster, but I would like to see a little bit more explosively out of him um, and not just five to 10 yard catches, which he did get an opportunity because I think him having more time with Matt Ryan over Olamide Zacchaeus um, allowed him to be able to get more time for Matt Ryan to trust him. But this is a guy that I look forward to in camp when camp starts. Uh, I don't know if the fans are going to be able to be there, guys, this year. But, hey, if we can have some football in the midst of all this COVID-19 that's going on, that will be a blessing. Uh, but I'm looking forward to see what Christian Blake can do. Let's keep this thing rolling, man. Look, we already know what Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley bring to the table for the Atlanta Falcons. But there's some of these other guys that I think we need to get excited about. One guy we know, once Muhammad Sanu was um, traded from the team, this guy also got a chance to truly shine when we know Calvin Ridley finally claimed the number two spot uh, with Julio Jones being number one. This guy was able to claim his role. Yes, Russell Gage, our sixth round pick in 2018. Can y'all believe this guy's about to go into his third season? And he looked pretty good for the Atlanta Falcons last year and was making many plays for Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan should have a lot of trust in Russell Gage coming up in 2020. Um, you're going to see plays where Russell Gage, when I think really was one of his best games, was the last game of the season against the Tampa Bay Bucks. I uh, had like 68 yards in that game or so. And he just looked good being able to find the spots in his own splitting defenders to get where he needs to get to. The only thing is, when you look at these clips, man, you see him on the ground, and it's taking a minute for him to get up. I just want him to just beef up himself just a little bit, get a little bit more weight on him, or just work out a little bit more um, to be able to help him to be able to sustain some of those hits because he will be a guy that I think the Atlanta Falcons are going to rely on heavily as that third wide receiver. But... Some of these guys, I don't think are going to make it easy for him to have that third wide receiving spot. It's going to be some fire breathing down Russell Gage's neck, I believe, um, with some of these guys that are going to be hungry to make this roster for the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, let's keep it going, man. Another guy that they just added. Now, I watched this guy in the Collegiate Bowl, and I got the chance to go back and watch some of his film, Chris Rowland. Uh, this guy's 5'8", about 180. They've used this guy running the football at times, um, catching quick screens, which I think you're going to get the opportunity to see him do in the preseason uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. You know how Dirk Cutter loves his quick screens, his bubble screens. Um, 
This is a guy that can really help the offensive line excel in being able to get this quick passing game going for the Atlanta Falcons. He can take a quick screen and just get open in space. You get him out of space, he's going to do some damage and get yak for you. Um, a lot of these guys, I think this is going to be the key for Matt Ryan, just getting that ball out and letting these guys do what they do and go to work on the field in space and make some things happen. And this guy, Chris Roller, undrafted free agent, did not get drafted by anyone in the 2020 draft. And the Falcons gave this guy 80K. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know of any other undrafted free agent that they've ever paid that high. So they really believe in what this guy can bring. Yes, he does have kickoff and punt return abilities. I didn't like what I saw in the Collegiate Bowl, however, because he muffed a few, few punts. And one of the things Bucky Brooks did say is he has to learn that these guys are going to be trying to shake you up and really get around you and hover around you when you're trying to catch that ball. And you cannot afford to be muffing punts, especially when you want to beat this next guy, Brandon Powell, out of the position. And what Dan Quinn says right now, it is Brandon Powell's job to lose with the punt and kickoff return. Now, I don't know a lot about Brandon Powell, but I do know he does have some NFL experience, and he has returned punts and kickoffs before with the Detroit Lions, and he's with the Atlanta Falcons. So him and Chris Rowland will have a chance to really compete for a special team spot because you know you got to make your door on special teams first, especially as an undrafted uh, free agent before you can really make the roster with this team. And... Those two are definitely, I can see, going at it. I can see Chris Rowland being someone like your Taylor Gabriel. Um, we'll see how that works out. Tavon Austin, now things didn't quite work out for Tavon Austin in the NFL. He's done a few things, but nothing like what they thought he was going to do when he was taken in the top 10 um, to the Rams. So we'll see if Chris Rowland can really make this team. But I believe with 80K and 20 of those 20,000 of those was a bonus, his signing bonus. I think he's going to make this team, ladies and gentlemen. And this guy definitely has the speed uh, and can juke you and make some plays when it comes to getting out in the open space, some quick receiving screens and things like that to really help this offensive line. Now, I know a lot of you, before we continue on, are going to say, man, if the offensive line can keep holding up, I see those comments all the time when I talk about the offense. But ladies and gentlemen, Chris Morgan has got to shoulder some of this responsibility too as well. I'm not just going to put it all on the offensive line. And I actually think we've added some other pieces. And when you got guys like Chris Lindstrom and Caleb McGarry coming back in their second year, I think they're going to be much better on that right side right side of the, of the line, holding it down for the Atlanta Falcons and Matt Ryan. Uh Hey, once we figure out what this left guard situation is going to be, if Matt Hennessy, and I'm having my money bet on him, that he's going to be the guy that's going to hold down that left guard position until Alex Mack leaves and he takes over at the center position and what she excelled at at Temple. But, man, let's, let's keep on going, man. Like I said, we already know what Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley are going to bring to the table. And, of course, you all know that Justin Hardy is gone. He is no longer with the Atlanta Falcons. Making room for guys like Olamide Zacchaeus, Christian Blake, Russell Gage to really be able to do their thing um, in this 2020 season. Um, let's talk about you got Ty Gurley. And you guys know that you best believe that Dirk Cutter is going to take every advantage he can with a 6'2", 224-pound running back to be able to make some plays, catching the ball out the backfield and running routes. So I'm definitely excited to see what Todd Gurley is going to be able to bring to the Atlanta Falcons. I do feel he is an upgrade to Devontae Freeman. No disrespect to Devontae Freeman, but I really feel good about Todd Gurley despite the arthritis in his knee. Uh, I think he's going to contribute well, especially in the passing game. Uh, if you saw my video talking about Dirk Cutter and the passing game and the run game for that matter and what Dirk Cutter likes to do, hey, I advise you to go back and check those videos out and you'll see what I'm talking about and how I imagine Todd Gurley fitting into 
this team, especially in the passing game. Uh, let's keep it going, man. Edo Smith. Now, Edo didn't really get to shine the way that we know he could. This guy definitely can catch the football out the backfield and run routes for the Atlanta Falcons, especially those luxurious wheel routes that Dirk Cutter likes to have within his passing concepts. So I really believe that Edo Smith will come back strong this year. You can see that the Falcons really believe in the Atlanta Falcons running backs because we didn't draft one at all. So we really believe in Quadre Olison, Brian Hill, Edo Smith, and Todd Gurley, who has been added into the mix. Man, let's keep this thing rolling, man. Laquan Treadwell. Now, this is an interesting prospect. Another former first-round pick um, taken by the Minnesota Vikings. Um, this guy didn't truly get the opportunity, I feel, to develop for the Minnesota Vikings, but I do believe him getting with Julio Jones and learning some of the things that Julio Jones will have to offer and Calvin Ridley for that matter is really going to help him. Two things I can see that can help him. His release off the line of scrimmage. Julio Jones will definitely be able to help him to be able to release a lot faster off the line of scrimmage. And not only that, number two, using his hands to combat corners when they're trying to get their hands on them to jam them off the line of scrimmage. This dude is 215 and 6'2". It is no way he should not be able to handle himself at the line of scrimmage against these corners. And all these corners are not going to be 6'1 facing Laquan Treadwell. Now I'm showing some clips that you'll see I took from the 2018 season more so than the 2019 season of the Minnesota Vikings. He had a much better year as far as yardage goes that year, over 300 plus yards. Uh, and if you just saw him in five wide receiving personnel grouping, you remember me, if I talked about that, I talked about them being in five wide and how Dirk Cutter loves that five wide offense. And you saw him make a catch in it. Now, you got to understand, this guy was with Kirk Cousins, if I'm not mistaken, Case Keenum. Um, and come on, they're not Matt Ryan. People can talk about Matt Ryan all they want to, but they are not Matt Ryan. And I think this guy with Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, and Matt Ryan, he is going to have an opportunity to fight for that third spot, especially putting somebody 6'2", 215, like you did Muhammad Sanu, working a lot out of the slot, really learning the technique uh, out of the slot and being able to, like I told you, being able to get into his routes much quicker for the Atlanta Falcons who run a stepping system, uh, which is different from going into a depth on your routes. It is totally different. I'm not going to really get into that part, but I think this guy can excel with the Atlanta Falcons and fight for that third spot. If anything, get that fourth spot. Um, which will leave Alameda Zacchaeus and Christian Blake fighting for five and six because I do believe they're going to take six and have six on the roster come 2020, which they usually do. Um, hey, man, many of you I know have to be excited about the trade of Hayden Hurst. Hey, I think this guy has an opportunity to be a thousand yard receiver, if not close to it, between eight to a thousand yards for the Atlanta Falcons and at least five touchdowns. Dude is six six, two fifty plus, and got speed like you wouldn't believe. Now, of course, you know over there with the Ravens, you're gonna run things that your quarterback is comfortable with when it comes to route concepts. So I don't feel like they did a lot of things that Hayden Hurst was good at coming out of college. Number one, running deep and shallow crossing routes. And the one big play that you guys continue to see the highlight of was him running a deep crossing route against the Buffalo Bills coverage and taking that thing, cutting up field and going straight to the house. And you was not going to catch this guy. This guy is going to enjoy these deep crossing routes and shallow crossing routes that we've seen Calvin Ridley and Muhammad Sanu time and time again, even before Dirk Cutter got here, enjoy and have success with under Kyle Shanahan and Steve Sarkeesian. And Dirk Cutter has kept that. And Matt Ryan loves those route concepts within the routes that his wide receivers are going to run. And this guy will definitely 
excel with those deep and shallow crossing routes along with just busting it down the seam um, and really taking advantage of busted coverages, whether it's cover two, cover three, it does not matter. He is going to stretch the field, I believe, for the Atlanta Falcons. Hey, and I'm going to tell y'all right now, if you don't believe that Jaden Graham can make plays, I don't know what to tell you. Because these two clips you're going to see of Jaden Graham, once again, shining on the New Orleans Saints and making a nice TD grab for Matt Ryan against the New Orleans Saints defense. And then shining again uh, on a nice down the scene play for the Atlanta Falcons. This guy can make some plays for Atlanta. Now, I'm not saying he's going to be number one now, but he might have a shot later on in the future. And I think he definitely is going to fight hard to be number two over Kyrie Lee, whom the Falcons went and picked up from the XFL, I believe, with the D.C. Defenders. Uh, I don't know a lot about this guy. When the season first started uh, with the XFL, I did watch the D.C. Defenders, and he looked pretty good. He made some nice plays and actually looked very physical at times, but there were also times where he just looked out of sorts. Um, and you can see why there were times he's not in the NFL. But we shall see uh, what Ben Steele and Dirk Cutter, Ben Steele, the new tight ends coach taking over for Mike Malarkey, is going to be able to get out of this guy. I definitely think the Falcons have three capable blockers and pass catchers, especially in the red zone. Speaking of the red zone, let's talk about the other tight end that the Falcons went out and signed as an undrafted free agent. I think him running at 493 was a reason why he did not at least get drafted in the sixth or seventh round um, by any team for that matter. But the fact that he's with the Atlanta Falcons, he reminds me, and I'm going to go ahead and say it, Algie Crumpler. Dude definitely possesses the physical tools to be able to manhandle guys while catching the football, high-pointing it. You see a clip with him catching a catching touchdown. I think he's going to be a great red zone target for the Atlanta Falcons and Matt Ryan. I believe that our red zone is going to really improve with some of the guys that we have. And I'm excited about this receiving group the Atlanta Falcons are bringing in. You got some tall Big size physical tight ends that you're bringing in. You have quite a few 6'1 and 6'3 receivers on your team. They definitely wanted to get much bigger and stronger, adding to Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley, and adding a lot of speed to be able to run these four verticals in this Air Coyier offense style that Dirk Cutter likes to run. Ladies and gentlemen, Dirk Cutter is not the only one that runs that scheme and system in this division. Peyton, Sean Peyton has been running it forever. And you also have now Bruce Arians that also runs that system as well. So three teams at least out of the four, because I'm not really sure what Carolina Panthers is going to bring yet with Brady being the uh, offensive coordinator there from LSU um, and what they're going to be able to run. We've seen what he was able to do at LSU, but will he be able to bring that here to the Carolina Panthers? I think he was with the New Orleans Saints, so I'm looking for it to be some similar style like what he was able to do at LSU and bring that over here um, for Carolina. But, man, this is going to be, to me, one of the best that I've seen as far as the wide receivers and tight ends that Matt Ryan has and the running backs, for that matter, that he has um, in his arsenal, man. This going to be another pick your poison type of season for the Atlanta Falcons. At least I'm hoping. Hey, man, you guys continue to share, like, comment. Let me know what you think about the wide receiver group that we talked about, some of the guys, and the tight ends for that matter. How you feeling about Chris Rowland and Jared Pickney uh, for the Atlanta Falcons, two undrafted free agents who I believe will make this squad. Hey, other than that, I'm Toby D. It's pound for pound, ATL. Peace. I'm out.